Hello, and welcome again to a lovely biblical devotion um, here at Shepherds for Christ. I hope this will be a blessing to you. Um, today's subject is a divide between God's people, the remnant, and the worldly. And the key scripture today would be, or well, the central scripture would be Matthew 25, but also Ephesians 2, 1 Peter 2, and Romans 12. I hope it is a blessing for you as much as it was for me. Um, I believe we should always pray before we read the scriptures that the Lord will inspire us through His Spirit. Let us pray. Thank you to Heavenly Father in Heaven for this wonderful opportunity to share these truths that you have shared with me and uh, to share it with those that are watching and listening. I pray that they will be encouraged by this. And Lord, at this time I ask that you will empty me of me and that your spirit will just fill me up with your truth and your understanding and that uh, it will be a great blessing indeed for all of us. Lord, your will, your way, your words. In the name of Jesus and all glory to the Father. Amen. Okay. So, um, I find this scripture quite comforting. And uh, we're going to begin at Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm going to read... And it says, I'm reading from the King James Version Bible. Um, but I pray that the Lord will inspire you uh, regardless of the um, version you have. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time, pa in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in times past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others so this is the old condition now we're going into the new condition and uh, there is a transition when you get baptized from uh, in the name of jesus that you move from uh, a life centered in the world and on self and personal desires and personal effects um, but the new condition is alive purely to the Lord and whatever his desire for you is but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in, in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. See, there is nothing that we can do in and of ourselves to please God. That's why he sent his son, John 3.16. Um, so that if we believe in him, he would give us the power and the strength to overcome the things of this world, no matter what it would be. Even addictions, for example. Um, all right, and not by works, lest any man should boast. Uh, we do not um, do things to prove ourselves good, for we are good. It says there is none that are righteous, no, not one. And we need Christ in us, in our hearts, to transform us and to be able to um, keep us focused on heavenly things. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So this is talking about a new standard of living, uh, a way of living, a lifestyle, if you would. Wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. And at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, that sacrifice, that being in connection with him, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the deference, as you would, 
even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. These are why, these are why, um, why Moses was given all those extra ordinances and um, extra laws uh, besides the law of God, which is the Ten Commandments, uh, to help a fallen Israel to behold their coming Messiah and to understand that. And with obviously over time, they had lost that spiritual insight. They had lost that um, that understanding. And they had added so much of them, their own understanding to it that they couldn't even recognize their own Messiah. And so it will be at the end of time um, before the Lord comes. Everything in the Bible um, will repeat itself as it always has and it will. Again, um, from verse 16, And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. Um, for through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father, which is Christ. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are builded together for an inhabitation of God through the Spirit. Alright, isn't that a beautiful scripture? Knowing that everything is centered in Christ and that through Christ and by Christ and by His sacrifice for us and that living in Him is the way forward. Unto, unto, unto holiness and righteousness. And it says, He that is righteous, uh, he that does righteousness is righteous because he is centered in Christ. All right, so we're going to go to our key text, um, or t- key um, scripture here, which is Matthew 15. I'm oh, sorry, not Matthew 15, Matthew 25. Forgive me for that. Matthew 25. All right, and it goes. And this is quite a this is quite a powerful scripture, and it gives us so much clarity on the difference between um, God's people and um, the worldly, those that um, have mixed truth with error, or those that live completely in error. And uh, some of us don't see it. Uh, I know I was there for a very long time. And I know that uh, my wife struggled with that for a very long time, but um, you know, thankful, we're thankful that we have the Lord in our lives and that we can be more than conquerors through Christ. And uh, indeed, Christ is our hope of glory. Okay, let's just read. It's a fairly lengthy uh, uh, chapter, but I will go through it as swiftly as the Lord will allow me. Okay, it says there. Uh, chapter 25 Matthew 25 then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them Uh, I've come to understand that the oil represents the spirit of the Lord um, being prepared with the spirit that he's given us to truth and to more truth to not add our own context not to add our own understanding, but to indeed shut off our minds and allow Him to flow through us this truth, through His Spirit, uh, which is His mind, His power, His glory. Um, And really you can say that these uh, foolish, they were not prepared, they had excuses uh, as to not uh, spend time in the Word, not to spend time with the Lord. And you know the key The key ingredient to a successful relationship is indeed time spent. Um, Yes. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. This is obviously talking about prepared um, and had fully surrendered themselves to what was about to happen. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. 
Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. This gives a parallel to what happened with, with Noah. But the door was shut, and for 120 years God gave Noah instruction um, on how to build the ark. He gave people the opportunity to repent, to and see the truth, and to listen to the words that Noah had been given by God. And it came to a point where the door was shut. There was no more an opportunity. And we are going to enter into that the same way. At this end time, there will be what we call a close of probation. There will be a cut off time for God's mercy. He will send warnings. He will send um, messages through his people. And people either accept it or they won't. And it is a sad thing, but it is a necessary thing. Afterward came, afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the, wherein the Son of Man cometh. We need to always be prepared. You know, at any time anyone could die. And we don't know where we are going to the first or the second resurrection, as the, as the Word of God says. And uh, that is another subject um, that we will be studying very soon and we'll be sharing with you um, this, the, the subject of death specifically. All right. From verse 14 it says, For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far, into a far country who called his own servants and delivered, them, delivered unto them his goods. And unto one, of, one he gave five talents, to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. This is obviously talking about the truth of God's word and him leaving and before he comes back what we have done with um, with the talents that he has given us to glorify him and to testify of his truth. Not for ourselves but for the glory of the Lord. It also talks about um, in Revelation it talks about three churches that will that will go to the end um, and that is the church of Sardis Philadelphia and Laodicea these are these are historical if you look at history these are historical times of church movement and when I say church I don't mean organization or domination I'm talking about a people that have um, truly surrendered themselves and followed the instruction of God uh, in his word and even in additional testimonies he's given through people all right um, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord, or of thy Lord. And he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Multiplying what the Lord has given us. All right. In wisdom and in truth. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And here it gets a little sad. But this is how it is for many of us. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not destroyed. And I was afraid, and went, and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that, that is thine. Sorry. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest and that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. This is judgment, my brothers and sisters. This is talking about judgment. 
Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. This is also for those that do not know what to do with the talents that God has given them. And let's say, for example, have um, been given the opportunity to uh, accumulate funds, to put those funds to good use, and to supply for people that are in ministry. Um, the big question of tithes, tithes are actually supposed to be used um, for that purpose. If you read Malachi chapter 3, it's very clear on this subject. Um, we should have trusted God and given it to ministries or to developments for God's work. That would have been the wise decision. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is referring to the final judgment. When the Lord returns uh, the third time. This is referring to Revelation. And um, if you look at the chart behind me, this is a this is the lineage of Abraham, the lineage of Nimrod, and the um, vision that was given by Daniel uh, in relation to the kingdoms that would be set up over the earth. This is a massive, this is actually what we call the great controversy between Christ and Satan. It is a study chart. And um, it has oh, it's a lot of prophecy and timeline there. And uh, we will get into that soon enough. All right. And it goes on to say, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them from one, one from another, as the shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And He shall shed the, sh the sheep on His right hand, sorry, but the goats on, his, on the left. Okay, this is dividing the righteous from the unrighteous. And shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungred, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungred? and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and this is a powerful answer, and the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So even if we have done it to the least of people, the low people of low estate, as it reads in Romans 12, which you're going to get to now, you have done it to Him. Because Christ died for all the sins of the world, all the transgression, for those that were before His time, those in His time, and those to the future. And it's a big weight. And it says, Then shall He say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungred, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungred, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying the same thing, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And that reminds of the scripture says, You deny me, you deny me on earth, and I will deny you in heaven. You deny me, I'm paraphrasing now, you deny me to the world around you, and I will deny you when the judgment comes. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal. And thankful, the punishment is not enduring. 
It is a swift punishment and death is final. You will never live again. All right, so these are the, this is the key scripture. But I would like for us to read 1 Peter 2 as well. Because 1 Peter 2 and Romans 12 give a very clear description as to what the Lord expects of us and what he expects of his righteous people. All right, 1 Peter 2. Okay, this is a beautiful description, and it reads, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, and if so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And we all have tasted in some way or another the Lord is gracious and looking after us. To whom coming, as unto a lively, st lively stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious, this is Christ, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, there's that word again, cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the corner, the head of the corner, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. You see the relation here between Matthew 25. Okay, this is the story um, of the man that had the ten, that had the five talents, and multiplied them to talents. And it goes on to say, "But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation." A peculiar people. You know, as we grow in the Lord, people think us strange. People think us weird. But we are getting ourselves ready for heaven. This is the way that heaven operates. This is the way that we are to yield ourselves to the Lord for. This is the way that Christ lived. We don't do what Christ did. We don't say what Christ said. We live as He lived, trusting in the Lord, the God, Father of all things, and allowing His Spirit to move through us, which now moves through Christ. Um, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And now, it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain, abstain, stay away from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. This is referring to Ephesians 2 again. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. This is hope for the wicked even before the time of probation. There is still hope. And God is given all that opportunity to trust in Him and to rely on Him for the strength to overcome this world. And He says, Do not be overcome of this world, for I have already overcome this world. So we do not need to worry about doing it in our strength. We stay remain in Christ, and He will do that. And it goes on to say, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto, government, unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. And look at this part. Honor all men. Love the brother brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. 
for this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if, when ye shall be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if, when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. And who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who his own self bare our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Isn't this encouraging, knowing that once again, if we stay in Christ, He shows the divide between those that are His and those that are not. And it gives us great strength, uh, reminding us of this. Now I'm going to read Romans chapter 12. And then I'm going to end off with that and give us most food for thought. Lord, thank you once again for your word. It is so powerful and so clear. We thank you in the name of Jesus for your strength and your spirit. Amen. Okay. And look at the look at the comparison. It's saying the same thing we read in the previous three chapters. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, mm -hmm. acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A living sacrifice? That's why it says we die daily. And John the Baptist, what Paul said, and uh, John the Baptist said, I must decrease, he must increase. A living sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. But be he transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, this is the Spirit of God, which is the mind of God, to have the mind of God in us through His Son, that He has died for us, that He gives us strength to all things, and that we can be more than conquerors through Christ. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. He's given us all a measure of faith. And we just need to exercise it. Remember, faith is taking God at His word. And grace is Him fulfilling that word. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, because we're all different, we all have different talents. For we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, you know, dissimulation, the meaning of dissimulation means to conceal one's thoughts and feelings and ideas. And the word, of, the word of God says that we are to be without dissimulation. Our love should be true and pure. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor preferring one another. And there is another scripture that says that the elders, the elder men we should esteem as fathers and the younger as brothers and the elderly women as mothers and the younger as sisters. In honor, in honor preferring one another to esteem people higher than ourselves. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. And where does tribulation begin? It always begins in the mind because the devil likes to attack our mind and if we act upon it it just becomes a bomb of nonsense and we can do nothing except ask God for help verse 13 distributing to the necessity of Saints distributing to the necessity of Saints 
So this is talking about ministry, providing for the ministry, given, given to hospitality. We are to be hospitable one to another and to help one another. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. And that's probably one of the hardest things I even struggle with. To when someone is against you, to show blessing and kindness toward them, even if they are attacking you. Like Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? When they slapped him on the face, he turned his other cheek. So they may slap him on the other side. That is true love. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Go down to the people of, of lesser estate, lesser things, and be with them. Show them the love of Christ so they can have encouragement. Um, be not wise in your own conceits. This is why the word be not wise in your own conceits, it also ties in with the Lord where he says he is the respect of no persons. Okay? Because our our ideals, our understandings, our our ideas, our opinions are sinful by nature. And only Christ, if we have Christ in us, our hope of glory, can we ascertain the heavenly way of thinking like Christ had. He denied himself and took the form of a servant, it says. And that is that is what we are to do. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Sorry. It says, recompense to no man evil for evil. Not to fight evil with evil. But provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. It's just making it even more clearer. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. When people start freaking out or going crazy, and let them. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And that doesn't mean just at the end, within that moment, they will realize, and here it comes. This is the definition of guilt. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on mm -hmm. his head. This is talking about guilt and shame. If you do good to others, even when they're horrible to you, they will eventually feel guilty and they will have to apologize. And this is the most prominent and most profound thing at the end of Romans. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Isn't this encouraging knowing that we can overcome all things? And if we do, we have a just reward for the Lord, from the Lord, sorry. And He will give us this. He will help us to get to heaven with this standard. Because this is how, st this is how heaven works. This is how it was for Adam and Eve before they fell. And we can. Be more than conquerors through Christ. I know it is possible. And I hope this has been an encouraging uh, com compilation of scripture that the Lord uh, gave to me through devotion. And I hope it is helpful to you. And I encourage you once again, not just to read uh, these chapters in accordance to one another, but to spend time in the Word of God and to spend time in prayer and ask the Lord diligently, Lord, I give you all of myself. Take my thoughts, my opinions, my ideas, my selfish way of thinking. Take it away. Throw it into a pit far away and give me yours because I need yours. I hope this has been a blessing. Much love to you and um, may God's grace and favor be upon you and many blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen.